everyone, welcome back to another video with Bank of North Dakota. Today we are going to talk about student profiles and completing them for North Dakota Dollars for Scholars. So if you aren't aware, Bank of North Dakota administers North Dakota Dollars for Scholars scholarship program. I am the state director of that program, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through actually completing a student profile when you are um, getting ready to, to apply for scholarships with North Dakota Dollars for Scholars. Now, this student profile can be created, um, doesn't, you don't have to wait to create it until you're ready to apply for scholarships for, for college. You can actually create it earlier on, even if you're a freshman in high school and you want to get started on keeping track of your activities that you're doing in high school, um, maybe your volunteer opportunities, jobs that you have. You can actually get started with your Dollars for Scholars profile right now. So when you are a senior in high school, you'll have all of that information that you've um, been keeping track of throughout your high school career, and it won't be as much for you to have to complete. Now, if you are currently a senior in high school or you are in college and you have completed a Dollars for Scholars profile, you'll just wanna make sure you update that profile every year. If you have not completed a Dollars for Scholars profile yet and you have graduated from a North Dakota high school, you will definitely want to make sure that you follow along this video so you can create a Dollars for Scholars profile for yourself. So for North Dakota Dollars for Scholars, of course we're unique, we are unique, you are able to create any, um, you're able to apply for scholarships if you graduated from a North Dakota high school. So the beautiful thing is, is that you can log into this, um, into Dollars for Scholars profile, create, um, create a scholarship profile, and then apply for scholarships throughout your entire time in college. So the first time, if, if, if you haven't applied yet and you're still in high school, the first time you'll apply is when you're a senior in high school. Scholarships are open January 1st to April 1st every year. So you can log in now and start creating that profile. And for those of you that are currently in college, you can create it now as well or log in and update it too. So we will get started. I'm gonna take you there from the basics. We are gonna just go straight over um, and log in through North Dakota Dollars for Scholars. So what we'll do is we'll type in the um, web address, which is northdakota.dollarsforscholars.org. Once we are here, we're going to go over here and click on students and parents. Once we're there, this page here is just an opening page um, telling you a little bit more about how to apply and whatnot. I am going to um, come back and refer to this page because at some point um, when we're going through the profile, you will see, um, you will need these instructions right here for your student aid report. What we're going to do though, whether or not you have a student profile, you're going to click on click to log in. If you've already got a current profile, you'll just click and log in through here. So your student address and your password. If you do not have a student profile yet, you'll click don't have account yet, create one here. You will want to make sure when you are creating this account that um, you search by, I typically search by city. Um, because if you search just by high school name, there can be a lot of, of those same, um, or uh, high school name, there can be a lot of those high school names throughout the country. Um, so in this scenario, I'm just gonna say I uh, attended a Fargo High School, I attended Davies, so I'll click choose this school. Then I will go through and complete all of this information right here. And then at the bottom, I'll click submit. I do want to highlight right here where you're, you will confirm your email address right here that you make sure that you enter an email address that's going to follow you. So if you've got, if you're entering a high school email address, that address typically will not follow you through um, college. So make sure you input a personal email address in there somewhere that you will be able to get notified when scholarships open um, and such and then you would click submit. I already have a test student started, so I'm just gonna go back here and go um, click to log in and enter in my, um, my 
information. I can't talk and type at the same time, so I'm gonna enter this in here quick. All right, so once I am logged in, you will see here, this is my, um, the, the login page, the dashboard. So you've got some my information here. This will show you how complete your profile is. You'll also have a my scholarship section. This is the area that you will have, um, you'll be able to log in and search for scholarships specifically in this area. Um, when scholarships are open, like I said, they're open January 1 to April 1. So every year you'll be able to go in there and click there. Um, and then you've got a couple different areas over here. My opportunities, these are different scholarships available. You'll be matched up here. These are the chapters you'll match to. So you can see um, just on the, the information I've completed already, I matched to North Dakota Dollars for Scholars. I matched to the National Dollars for Scholars organization as well. And then I just so happened to, in my, in my profile, I said I graduated from a Fargo High School. Fargo also has a local chapter, so I graduated or I matched to that chapter as well. Now, you do not have to have a local chapter to qualify for North Dakota Dollars for Scholars scholarships. So, um, a good example of this is Fargo has a local uh, chapter. West Fargo does not have a local chapter. So, if I said that I graduated from a West Fargo high school here, you would not see anything, any local Dollars for Scholars matching here. You would just see North Dakota Dollars for Scholars and the national scholarships. So these will give you some national scholarship information, um, some scholarship news, and then of course you've got your resources down here. So where you're gonna go first is you'll click on work on profile, and you will just take this step-by-step -step right through here. So you've got, you can navigate over here to certain areas. Um, I would recommend just starting at the basic info and going through it. Anything with a double red asterisk is going to be required information, so you will not be able to move forward if you do not have that information completed. If there's not a required or a red asterisk next to it, that information is not required. So you can see here, your, your middle name is not required. I've just got my, my, my um, middle initial there. So you'll just go through here. When it's asking for primary city, you'll click on search and then you'll type in so Fargo we've got Fargo listed right there and then um, make sure you do your zip code and then all of this information so is there's going to be some pre pre populated information from when you actually created your profile um, just a minute ago now what you're going to do if you want to upload a photo you certainly can and then you'll just click save and continue. You'll just save and continue on all through here. You'll want to make sure your birth date is up to date. Yeah, um, and then your all of your information with the red asterisks here as well. And then you um, will want to fill all of the rest of this information out. It doesn't have asterisks. Now, one thing I want to tell you is that the more complete your profile is, um, the better uh, better able you are going to be matched to certain scholarships. So there might be scholarships. So I can just tell you, for example, North Dakota Dollars for Scholars has a scholarship specific to students that are um, descendants of um, military or a veteran. And so if you do not answer this question here and leave it blank, you wouldn't be matched to that scholarship. So if you answer that question, you would be matched to that scholarship. So um, it's just a good idea to complete as much as much information as possible. You would then go click save and continue. Here's going to have your school information. So for those of you, if you're in high school, you'll just put the year that you expect to graduate from high school. If you're in college, you'll put that college information here. And so for those college students, you'll just want to make sure you continually come in and update your, your grade level. So uh, last year I was a first year college student. This year I'm a second year, so a second year post high school student. Um, and then you'll want to make sure that you go through here, click save and continue as well. If you know your college student ID, I would highly recommend putting that information in here. Um, making stuff up as I'm going, uh, click save and continue there. Your GPA information, 
So you'll say I have a high school and college GPA if you're a current college student. If you're only a high school um, GPA, if you're in high school currently, no college, you would just put high school GPA information only. And then you'll put your GPA here and what that um, uh, the scale is for high school and then same for college right there. We'll click save and continue. Um, does your school rank students? Uh, whether or not you know, if you know, you can click yes. If you don't, you can leave it blank or click no if, if they do not rank students. Here, you will enter test information. Now, um, for North Dakota Dollars for Scholars, we don't require specific testing information. For local chapters, they may or may not require it. So, you, if, if you want to add that in, like I said earlier, the more information you're able to add, the better. You don't have to add this information, uh, but if you do have it, I would recommend adding it. So you can just add a test. Um, you click add test. You just click the test name, whatever whatever the, the test was, the score, and then the score date, and then you would just um, save that. Okay, we're gonna click save and continue. Here's where you can enter any activities that you have. So this is really nice. If you get this started when you're like a freshman in high school, you can start adding in these activities right away. If you um, don't do this or if, if you haven't already created uh, like a spreadsheet, you could just use an Excel document too that tracks your activities in high school. I would highly recommend doing that as well. So other scholarships that you're applying for outside of Dollars for Scholars, you've got all of that record as well. So it's a quick, easy way to track all of the activities that you're involved in. And so there is room, you can add however many activities. If you're in 10 different activities, add them in here. College students, you, you can leave your high school activities in there and then add in your um, college activities as well. So I just did an example here, FFA for high school um, and then student senate for, for college, I added in there. You'll click save and continue. Here if you're awarded any specific awards for merit or anything, if you're on the honor roll or if you're in high school or dean's list in college, specific um, specific information or it's specific awards you can add in here national honor society for high school definitely add those awards um, and merit in here and those are things that you can save in that little tracker as well as you're um, keeping track of the the different things that you're doing throughout high school then you'll want to if you're employed you'll want to put that information in here always make sure to keep this information updated so, you know, if you created this when you were in high school, now you're a junior and you're not currently working at Subway any longer um, as a junior in college, take that uh, employment information out and input the correct information. Okay, we'll go save and continue here. Here is where you will upload your uh, transcript or upload any additional documents. You can just um, go save and continue here and continue on. What I would recommend, um, you, you'll see, remember when I, I had said out here that you're gonna have um, one of the steps to applying, you will have to upload the first page of your student aid report for North Dakota dollars for scholars um, to match to some of our scholarships. You can choose not to upload that um, and not to provide financial information, but if you choose not to do that, there are some scholarships that you may not match to. So where you will upload those is going to be right in this document section. For how, how to access your SAR um, that shows your EFC, the instructions are listed right here and it's a link, just a, um, a link that you can click on and then you would go to access those instructions just right there. So that's pretty easy. Um, so that's what I have done here is I uploaded that page here. And then I did upload my high school transcript and then my college transcript. So that for that college transcript, you can just make sure that it's consistently updated. High school, you don't have to worry about uploading it until you're done with high school. All right, so then you've got your um, parent consent information here. Actually, I should go back when I said high school transcript, you, can, you don't have to upload until you're done. I would recommend uploading like the current one that you have if you're a senior this year and then once you're done with with high school go in and upload your final high school transcript 
here's the financial information. So you would um, indicate from that student aid report what EFC you received. Um, and if you were eligible for uh, Pell Grant, which is a, a grant that you don't have to, money that you don't have to pay back through the um, FAFSA. All right, so then we'll click Save and Continue here. I will note this is a page that you do not have to complete. Um, however, if you don't complete it, you, there, like I said, there may not, not be, there might be some scholarships that you might not have um, matched to that you would have otherwise matched. So we'll go Save and Continue. Here is um, going to be a, a Goals and Aspirations essay for you. So here, or yeah. Goals and Aspirations is, is this area, so here you will um, complete this essay information. You can see that there are no specific, um, there's no specific length requirement for North Dakota Dollars for Scholars um, or Fargo Area Dollars for Scholars. You can see that right here. If there's a local chapter that has a specific length requirement for this, it'll be listed here. If it's 500 words or 1,000 words or what have you, that would be listed right here. This, I would say, do your very best when you're completing this um, because this is going to be used for the different scholarships that you'll apply for. Um, and a tip here, any information that you put in here, copy and paste it into a Word document so you can use that for other scholarships that you apply for as well outside of North Dakota Dollars for Scholars. Here we'll click Save and Continue. And then this is going to be an unusual circumstance area right here. So if you have an unusual circumstance um, situation at home, you can put that information right there um, or something with, within your life. We'll go save and continue. Transcripts, um, you, this is just talking about that you would upload your transcript information um, in that, that documents, um, in the, the documents tab, which we did do there. We'll go save and continue. All right, so last but not least, we've got the references tab. So you can see here, this shows you what chapter is requesting you to provide references. So North Dakota Dollars for Scholars does not require students to provide references. Um, however, you can see I matched to Fargo Area Dollars for Scholars for that local chapter and it's telling me that Fargo Area Dollars for Scholars is requiring me to add references. So I would add those reference information in right here um, and then go save and request. Um, so I'll, I'll just take you through here. So test person, um, test. I'll go five, 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 five. five. Um, I always just put my email address so nobody, um, random people receive information. So I'm going to say this is my counselor that's doing um, a recommendation for me. And then um, reference relationship if other, if, if outside of here. Um, here you can see you can use a counselor, a registrar, a supervisor, um, a teacher, a relative, a mentor lots of different options available and then save and request recommendation um, so then that um, individual will get an email saying that they've requested a, a reference from you all right now here we have two options because we're at the end we can save and look for scholarships or save and go to dashboard so what i'm going to do here i'm just going to go save and go to dashboard so this brings you right back out to where we were previously I'm going to go back to work on profile, go back down to references, and go save and look for scholarships. This will bring you to your scholarship area, um, to your My Scholarships, and let you know what scholarships you have available for you. We are not the scholarship season currently. While I'm, when I'm recording this video, the scholarships aren't open and available yet. You might be watching this when the scholarships are open and available. Um, any scholarships that you match to, will all be listed right in this area. So right now it says you have no unsubmitted scholarship applications at this time. So between for North Dakota Dollars for Scholars, between that January one and April one, those scholarships would be listed right here that you match to. And you will match the scholarships based on how you completed your student profile information. So you can see here for my um, testing purposes, these um, will always follow you. These are the scholarships I've been um, 
applied for and these are the scholarships that I've actually been awarded. Let's, so let's go back here. So if you just click back to dashboard, it brings you back to that login page. If you wanna just, let's say you've worked on your um, student profile uh, and you worked on it all through high school and your senior year of high school as well, and you are now, um, it's January 1 of your senior year, you can just, if you don't have anything else to update in your profile, you can just um, go right to the dashboard and click search for scholarships, and that brings you right back to that same scholarship search page. If you need to update anything, if you're a college student, you can go always click, go back to my dashboard, work on profile, and then make sure um, you save everything and search for scholarships. So that's a quick overview in a nutshell. If you have additional questions to this, you by all means can send them, um, send them my way. Um, leave a comment down in, in the comment box and we'll definitely get back in touch with you. If you find this information um, useful, like always, feel free to, to share it out and give us a big thumbs up. All right, that's it for today, everyone. I hope everyone has a fantastic day and good luck searching and applying for scholarships and um, updating this Dollars for Scholars student profile. All right, talk to you later. Bye.